appreciate it. If you missed Sunday School, please go back and watch it. You know, we've been doing a lot uh, in a theme of the last days for a few weeks now on Wednesday nights and studying eschatology, and there's just so much more that's there that's available, and uh, and so I really uh, appreciate the, the Sunday School lesson this morning. It's just going to get better. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, next week is going to be great. Please be here for Sunday school. Don't miss it. It's an opportunity to learn stuff that you may not be able to learn any other, any, any other time. And I want to encourage you to be here on Wednesday nights as well uh, as we've been going through the Bible and, and the scriptures and talking about the different things concerning the last days. Uh, that we might be able to actually get a good biblical grip on the truth of what's there instead of the hype about what might be there or somebody trying to draw conclusions that aren't scripturally based. And there's a lot of that out there. So we want to try to give us a good biblical picture of those things that are noted in the scriptures concerning that. So we want to be, uh, we want to encourage you uh, to be there as well, and uh, I forgot to announce it, uh, but um, we've we've been in need of a couple of, of we've had need the last uh, little bit of uh, some first aid stuff around the church. So uh, we got a really nice, uh, really nice first aid kit that I'm keeping at the Welcome Center. So uh, you know, obviously, please let somebody know so that we can help you with it. I don't want everybody getting into it and just helping themselves and making leaving it in disarray or whatnot. But you know, come get come get us, and we can go to the welcome center and help you out there if you have any need for that. Uh, but as for right now, let's get into our uh, sermon today, and we're going to go take our Bibles, if you would please, and go to Daniel chapter twelve. We're going to go to Daniel chapter twelve. We're just going to read the first four verses, and then we'll get right into the message today. Daniel chapter 12, beginning in verse 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of, all of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn Many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. If ever you've seen a time of an increase of knowledge, I mean, we've had a consistent uh, increase in knowledge. And they say that the knowledge of tech, the, the technology and the knowledge of that in doubles itself every 18 months. And so uh, knowledge has definitely increased. Uh, I, think, I think that's pretty, pretty evident. Uh, but this was for the, these words were all given to Daniel and the book was going to be sealed and nobody was going to be able to know about it. Didn't you just say something about a case that was sealed? And nobody's supposed to know about it, but eventually it will become known. Even some things that are even classified after a certain amount of time become unclassified or declassified and then then they have then you can access you know have access to them but i want to i want to preach uh, this morning with god's help on wisdom in the last days 
wisdom in the last days. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray you would uh, take this time now as we're opened your word and have begun the reading of it, Lord, and uh, I pray, Father, that our hearts would be open, our minds would be open. I pray, Lord, that you would just eliminate all distractions from us, Lord, that we might be able to focus and key in on the things that you have for us uh, in the next few moments that we have together here in the service. We ask, Lord, that you would just use your Holy Spirit to teach us today, Lord, and to show us, to impart that knowledge and the heavenly wisdom to us that we would understand and not miss anything that you have for us today. Thank you so much for this time. Take it over as it is your time and your word. I am your messenger. I pray you would use me accordingly as you will. In Jesus' name, amen. But the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation really do go hand in hand. All right, Daniel prophesies concerning the last days while Revelation explains them. That's the difference in the two, okay? You have that prophecy that's, that, that's been given in Daniel, and Revelation explains the prophecies, all right? Revelation is revealing. It's, it, that's, we're supposed to be getting those mysteries unlocked uh, for us, and we can, we can find that because God gave us a complete book. Amen. He didn't leave it out. He did not want us here ignorant. He did not want us here unaware of what's going on or what will come. Now listen, we all know that with the unknown, fear is attached to it. So naturally, we would be afraid of that which we do not know, correct? I mean, we have that. We know that. We experience that. So then, how would God say... Hey, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid, and then not and then and knowing that there's unknowns. How would he do that? How could we do the impossible? If I if I am afraid because of the unknown, then wouldn't it make sense that God would tell me what I don't know and I won't have to fear? See, that's what he did. We don't have to be fearful of those things. Yes, you know what? We might have to go through some hard times, folks. There's nothing that says that the church is taken out before problems hit. We know we'll be, we'll be taken out before the Antichrist is revealed. But think about how bad that's going to be before he gets to that point. Everything will have to be perfectly, almost already enacted or about to or be quickly be able to be enacted at his word in order for that to even happen. So we don't have to worry about anything after the Antichrist is revealed because we're not here, we're in heaven. We don't have to worry about that. So you don't have to worry about that. You, if you're saved by, uh, if you're saved by the blood of Christ... We'll never go through the great tribulation. We're gone. We're in heaven. You don't have to worry about those things. Right? Now we do, we will have issues to deal with. We already are dealing with some of those issues. The, the, the change from, you know, from, from the way things were and uh, to, to the way things are now headed toward communism. Uh, they're, they're headed toward communism by, way, by a freeway of socialism. We just haven't hit that juncture yet. You know, like when you're going down uh, 275, eventually there's a juncture for I-94. I'm not on I-94 yet because I'm still on 275, but it's coming. And I'm going down the freeway a mile a minute. And in case you, that is the speed limit, by the way, 70 miles an hour is a mile a minute. In case you, fun fact for today, I timed it. Because <laughs> uh, I'm like, I wonder how fast a mile a minute is. I'd heard that saying all my life, but I didn't. It's 70 miles an hour. So anyway, yeah, just throwing the fun facts for you, you know, just keep you, keep you going there. Uh, but anyway, we're headed down that way. The, the world is headed down that way a mile a minute, 
And we're going towards those things. We're headed for the problems. We're headed for the destruction as it was pointed out this morning so wonderfully in Sunday school. That is the freeway America has chosen to be on. America was never on that highway before. America used to be on God's highway. We made our own highway. But then, somewhere along the line, oh, look, detour. Wouldn't it be better? Hey, hey, wouldn't it be better if we did this? No. Everything that is enacted in our country is designed to benefit those that reside up in that way. It's not designed to help the American people. It hasn't been for the people for a long time. We know this. You can tell by the way things are going and how the, the, the decisions that have been made reflect personal wealth for, for people that should not be wealthy. I mean, think about it. You know, the president's only supposed to make like, like 200000 a year, which I can't even, you know, I mean, you would think that would be the highest paying job in America. Wrong. He gets more for a speech than he does for, a whole, for, for the whole year. Think about that. He gets more by one speech than he does for the whole year. And, you know, and then you, you, you take a look at that, and then you have, you know, we've had a former president that was very wealthy. No wonder he just said, oh, psh, I'll just, nope, I don't need to take it. Just let's use it. Let's put it here. Let's put it here. Let's put it here. But yet all those people's net worths are in the millions when their Congress is making supposed to make less than what the president does. How are they getting rich? Hmm, interesting. That's for another time and another season. <laughs> But I'm telling you, everything has been about, and, and that's what mankind is, and that's why man leading man always leads to destruction. That we, we've always been that way. From the, from the day they said, we want a king, we don't want you to lead us, we want a king because everybody else has one, that's man leading man, it's been, a, it's been a disaster ever since. It leads to destructive because man is inherently selfish. What can I do to benefit me? What can I do to benefit me? They want to they act like, oh, guess what? Oh, you know, and, and all, those, all the stimuluses that went out. Oh, boy, you know, the government's really looking after us. When has that ever been a thing? No, they're not. Because that's why we have the inflation that we have. That's exactly why the inflation is as high as it is, is because of the multiplied trillion dollars, whatever, whatever, however many it was. I didn't even pay attention to the actual number, and I know somebody's probably Googling it right now. I don't need to know. All I know is that, that those big rounds of all that money going out, something's got to happen, folks. The government's never been interested in helping you out. They've always been interest, interested in helping themselves out. And, you know, it doesn't matter what happens to, to, to the little guy. We're going to make this choice, and we're going to make this choice. And it's never, and, and I've, I've been disgusted with the whole thing for a long time. Because none of them act like they actually represent anybody but themselves. They represent their parties and not the people. I've been disgusted with that for years. Because, it, you know what? So let's say, let's say, you know, if we truly, let's say all of us, let's, let's pretend just for a minute that, that we're Congress for a minute, okay? Just for a second, we're going we're gonna to play, because uh, this also is good. Uh, good kind of to, to, to think about it. So if you have half that's Republicans and half that's Democrats or whatever, and they're basically, you know, that way, all right, well, yeah, we'll have a couple extra so they control and whatnot. But then, okay, let's say we're all supposed to represent our states. 
right? That's what we're supposed to do. You're supposed to represent your state. You're supposed to represent your state, blah, blah, blah. The people of your state. So somebody from the other side, the other camp, has a great, I mean a great idea that would benefit the people of your state. Now, we would normally want to say, yes, I want to support that because of the fact that this is going to help people in my state that I represent, and their interest is what I'm after. But you know what happens? That, that's that, now, normally, that's how, a, in a perfect world, that's how it would, would be. But you know what happens? All the Democrats vote for their policies and theirs only. All the Republicans do it for theirs because we, we can't associate with the others. Where's the people in that? Okay? I'm just giving you just a little bit of a, a thought line as to why we are in the shape that we're in. It's because they're voting for a party, not the people. That's what that's 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 the shape of a government. So we already know that that's the road that they've taken. Now there are several things that Daniel describes in these verses. He he describes the rapture of the church uh, in the first verse. Thy people shall be delivered. It's written that are written in the book. Uh, he mentions the revelation of Jacob's trouble. There's going to be a time of trouble like that wasn't since the beginning since there was a nation. He mentions the resurrection of the saved, some to everlasting life, and the resurrection of the lost, uh, to shame and everlasting contempt. So just for a few minutes, I want to look at the phrase, and they that be wise. That's an important thing. One of the things that I see in our day is a lack of wisdom. And, uh, and of course, uh, we have a lot of people in this room uh, much, much more experienced than myself and have seen multiplied way more things than I've ever seen uh, in regards to that. That could, that could easily give us a picture of, of, of what's, what, what, what it is we're talking about. But see, you, you know, all of us, but even people my age, as old as I am, we've witnessed the death of common sense. It died. Nobody ever had a funeral for it. I don't understand that. It died. You know, people are more edu educated today than any other generation. And yet, it's, it's ridiculous. They have little or no common or horse sense. Years and years and years of college and college and college and this and that and this and that. And they have no sense. Gee, I thought, you know, I thought that was supposed to, to help you. But, and I use that word educated loosely because really what's coming out of schools and colleges uh, nowadays is more programming than it is uh, educating. They're not educating our children anymore. They're programming them to fit in. They're programming them to go along with it. They're programming them to see all the flaws. They're programming them to rebel against what's going on so that they'll be more... I tell you, the, the people that are going to really jump at what the Antichrist throws out there is what's come out of our, our, our programmed children, our programmed adults. They're going to jump right on board with it. And you think, well, man, how would, they, how would anybody think about that? I mean, it, it, the fact that abortion was even an issue to start with is baffling to me. I mean, who comes along and say, hey, uh, why don't we just kill it? I mean, who thought of that in the first place? How did taking life ever become an option? When we as a country uh, are, are propagating uh, the pursuit of happiness and, 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 and that, that, we would, that we would pursue life and, and, and happiness and liberty, how can you pursue it if you're dead? 
And you don't give people a chance. That's not okay. That's not okay. But it's amazing how many Christian people that claim to be Christian are advocates. Oh, I've seen all kinds of posts. Oh, this and that and the other thing. And, and now the government is trying to tell women what to do with their bodies. Well, no, the government isn't. I want to explain this very clearly. It has nothing to do with the woman's body. It has everything to do with the individual's body that's within the woman. That is a person. It is not her. It is not the mother. It is the baby. That baby is a person. That baby has a soul. That baby has a brain. It's got a heart. It is a separate person. Period. Nobody is saying anything. And I get tragic circumstances. And I get all this different stuff. But this falls under the same logic as trying to control the population. Because they know when, when, when people and preachers stop preaching against uh, abstaining uh, from sexual activity until you're married and remaining pure. And that used to be beat, beat down from the pulpits and go home. And there was morals that, drew, drew, that drew, drive that into the hearts of people. This is what we expect. Why would you do this to yourself? Why would you do this to your body? Why would you risk uh, all the diseases that are, that are out there from people that are careless with their own body? Because you run the risk now of contracting what they may not even know that they have. Because you want a good time. You think he loves you. He doesn't. They don't know anything of love. It's all lust. That's all it's ever been. Lust. So instead of training people right, and, and that, that would actually make good moral decisions to abstain from that, then, well, we're just gonna, we're just gonna try to sweep everything, all the bad decisions under the rug. We're just gonna eliminate them. No, that's murder. That's murder, you've just murdered. Premeditatedly murdered. They better be glad I wasn't making a law. Because every mother that did that would be in jail. Anyway, on a lighter note, we see a lot of this programming. There's a great difference between spiritual wisdom and the wisdom of the world. We know that. God said that his wisdom is foolishness to man and man's wisdom is foolishness to him. My definition of spiritual wisdom is found in a verse in James James 4, 17, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. That's foolishness. To, to, know, to know better and to still do it, that's foolishness. Know it's sin and still do it is absolute foolishness. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him. The, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it, that's wisdom. If you do it, then it's wisdom. Wisdom is the right use or exercise of knowledge, the choice of laudable ends, the be, uh, of the best means to accomplish them. So in scripture theology, wisdom is true religion, godliness, it's piety, the knowledge and the fear of God, sincere and uniform obedience to the commands and his commands. Uh, and this is the wisdom which is from above. And we need to understand that wisdom in not knowledge, nor uh, it's not knowledge, nor is it intellect. Wisdom is the right application of the knowledge. So, first of all, there's wisdom in God's word. Second Timothy three fifteen, and for that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are make uh, which are able to make thee wise into salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Secondly, there's wisdom in a godly walk. Walking right. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14 through 17 says, 
Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. <clears throat> so what is a spiritually wise person? Let's look at that. Let's look at a couple verses in the book of wisdom, of Proverbs. Uh, and we, find, we, we can find that very easily. Okay? But I want to I wanna just, I'm going to skip over that real quick. I want to get right down to the point uh, about wisdom here. The very first point is that a wise man will come to Christ for salvation. No better thing to do than to make sure you're saved. Daniel 12, 3, And they that be wise shall shine as the bright brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. It's either everlasting life where they will shine, or it's everlasting shame and contempt where they'll burn. That's... Those are the two places. Those are the two ways. Ezekiel thirty three eleven say unto them, As I live, saith unto the uh, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? Listen, God does not take pleasure in the wicked dying and going to hell. There's no, there's no good feels about that with God. He, he brings things upon them. He, the whole point is to, to get them to turn from their wicked ways and, and receive the truth. That they might have life. Listen, G God did not send Jesus here to die for a select few. He's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance that's that's where his heart beats at a wise man secondly will hear the word of god proverbs 1 5 a wise man will hear and will increase learning a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels so the wise are going to hear god's word the foolish are going to turn a deaf ear to god's word and think ah oh, it's just just somebody up there trying to control somebody with an archaic book, and it doesn't really say that. And, and they've, they've got a, a million and one things that they want to try and dismiss their responsibility because they think that their accountability is now dismissed. If I tell myself in my mind that God's not real, there is none of this, that's just... That's just somebody's idea of keeping somebody trying to be a good, honest, per decent person, and I'll be who I want to be, and I'm not going to stand before God. That doesn't change a thing about what the truth really is. It doesn't. In my mind, I've dismissed it and thought I'm good. But then I'm going to find out I'm not good. And that, oh, I guess I should have listened to that preacher, and maybe that, that preacher was definitely right. I should have listened. I'd give anything to go back and hear him one more time. That's, you know what? Everybody in hell would love to be able to sit and hear a sermon like you get to hear. You know that? Every single one of them. There would not be room in this building for everybody that would want to come and hear, hear some little, little nobody preacher preach. There wouldn't be room in this building. It would all be filled with people. Can we, can we just get to it? Can we just get to it? Can we just get to the part where I can be saved and I don't have to go back there to that hell? Can we just get to the part where I get to hear about Jesus and I get a chance to come to an old-fashioned altar and pray a prayer and say I'm sorry for my sin and I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm sorry for disbelieving. And I believe with all my heart and my soul and you'd see them all get saved. It'd take you a millennium just to baptize everybody. That's what you would find if you had an invitation to hell to come on up here, come out to our service today. We couldn't hold the people. 
We couldn't hold the people. But then you can't get people that are alive on the right side of the dirt to darken the door of a church, including God's people. How sad is that? I don't think there won't be consequences for that either. Thirdly, a wise man will be diligent in his work. Proverbs 10, 5, He that gathereth in the summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in the harvest is a son that causeth shame. There's provision of hard work. There's the poverty of the slothful. Fourthly, a wise man will obey God's word. Proverbs 10, 9 and 8, or 10, 8 and 9, the wise in heart will receive commandments, but a pratting fool shall fall. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverteth his way shall be known. There's the obedient will walk in surety and safety. The disobedient will fall and manifest his folly. Fifthly, the man, a wise man will be careful with his words. Proverbs 10, 19. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. And I love this, and I've used this several times, but whenever I talk about this, I like to bring this, this up, this, this, this old saying, never leave your tongue in gear when your brain is idling. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. Proverbs 21, 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Sixthly, a wise man will win souls. Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. He that winneth souls is wise. And then we could refer back also to Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Right? Those wise people are going to shine as brightness, as the stars are forever. Okay? So a wise man will, will win souls. In Ezekiel 3, 18 and 19, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die as in iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Seventhly, a man... A wise man will flee from sin. Proverbs 14, 16. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but a fool rageth and is confident. So we see that the, the wise know the penalty of sin. That's why there's fear. The fear of the penalty, right? Crime, believe it or not, crime rates are usually down in states that carry the death penalty. Why do you think that is? Because there's a chance I could fry for this. So if I don't want to be a French fry, I better stay out of trouble in this state. I mean, that's just how it is. It's fear of the penalty. That is what most people have lost. They've lost a fear of penalty because there doesn't seem to be one. Oh, but it's on the way. It's on the way. We know the wages of sin is death. The wise know the enticement of sin. We are almost done. Proverbs 3, 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Listen, know that it's evil. Fear God and depart from it. That means you walk away. You walk away from the evil. You don't sit there and toy with it, play with it, mouse with it, find out what it's going to do. You don't do that. I, when, I think about, when I think about what people do with sin, I think about an illustration of a cat. Because you know how a cat, like, a cat likes to paw things. A cat and a porcupine. They just want to, what is that? They done got shot. And, you know, that whole curiosity killed the cat. That You can throw that statement in there, too. 
But that's what you think, well, that would be the dumbest cat in the free world. There's a lot of dumb people that are doing that with sin. What is that? What is that? Come on. Wise up. Be wise. Be fearful. No, that's evil because God told you not to touch the unclean thing. God told you to stay away from it and depart. You know what's going to happen here in just a few minutes after the invitation? Y'all are going to depart. That doesn't mean you hang around in here. That means you're going to depart. You're going to go. You're going to get in your cars. You're going to go and go on to do whatever you're going to do. Go out to the restaurant, go home, get something to eat, whatever it might be. You, that means you leave the premises. You leave where it's at. Now, this is a great place, and it's hard to depart from here sometimes. Sometimes it's hard to leave. Sometimes we don't want to get out of here and rush out into the craziness of the world because it just feels so good to be here. But that's what we need to do with sin. We need to depart from it. Be wise. Not in your own eyes, but fear the Lord. Proverbs, last scripture. Proverbs 13, 19. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is an abomination. Uh, it is abomination to fools that depart from evil. Now, fulfilling your desires might feel good, but sometimes it's not a great thing, depending on what that desire is. You know, if our desire is locked into doing more for the Lord and being more for the Lord and being better, even just better people, then yes, that's definitely going to be a sweet thing. That's definitely going to be a wonderful thing. But most desires, people's desires aren't, aren't there. Uh, I remember years ago, a, a trio I think my, my mom sang with, I think it was... Uh, she sang with my uncle and one other lady, but I always remembered them singing, It's My Desire. And that whole song was, It's My Desire to, do, to Be Like Jesus. It's My Desire to Be Like Him. And, and that's what I want. That's, that's where my desire is at. And so uh, that's my desire, and that's... The, if your desire is locked into that, then that's a great thing. Go and fulfill that. Go and be that. Go and do that. Follow that desire. Because you know what? God gave you desire, but he gave it to you so that you would desire him. He gave it to you. He, you know, sometimes we sometimes you hear about not using a, a, a tool for something other than its intended purpose. Right? Like, you know, so like, oh, I don't have a hammer, so I'll just use the back of this wrench and tap it down. That's not the wrench's purpose to be a hammer. That might work out, but you're going to probably have more bruises than you, than you do have anything else. Okay? It was, give, it was given to you. The wrench is given to you to do that, to, to, to do other things. It has a purpose for it. To, to tighten and to loosen that's what the wrench is given to you for. The wrench is not a hammer. The hammer's job is the pound to knock down or with the claw tooth to pull out. Right? God has given us things that we have misdirected and used for the things that are not what it was intended for. Like desire, even lust. We have the capability of lust because God built that into us. That is supposed to be part, connected with our desire that we use towards God. But we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't use it for that. We use it for this instead. And when we start realizing what God has given us and we start using what he gave us with its intended purpose... That's when we find that we've got, we've got a lot going for us at that point. Once we do that, let's come for the invitation. I'm done.